They are among the poorest of the poor. The street children of Honduras might have expected the protection of the state. Instead, they are its victims. This program has seen a new UN report due to be published in the next few days, which says the police may be implicated in the murder of hundreds of children driven to a life on the streets in a country that has been battered by one calamity after another. Our special correspondent, Fergal Keane, reports on a culture of violence and impunity that has turned the streets into killing fields. Theirs is a world with no happy families, the children of the street, sniffing glue from used baby food jars. Like Carlos, aged 14, and his 17-year-old friend, Cynthia, already a mother and pregnant again. Life is hard living on the streets. They tried to rape me once. I don't want to stay on the street. I want to leave, but I can't because I'm addicted to glue. If you've got no home, you scavenge for survival. In a country where three quarters of the population live in poverty, street children are at the bottom of the pile. These are the streets of innocence lost. But this is more than a story of poverty. It's also a story of murder on a frightening scale. For over the past four years, more than a thousand children and young people have been killed on these streets. For the vulnerable young, sudden and violent death can come at any time. Now we've learned that a soon-to-be-published UN report will accuse the police of being heavily implicated in the killings. Alexander Rice was killed by a policeman shot with an automatic rifle. He's buried in this plot owned by a children's charity. His sister, Yesenia, wants justice for her brother. Well, I feel powerless, and I feel that in this country there's no justice. I need something to be done about the death of my brother. That's all. Honduras is a democracy now, but the police and army still wield enormous power. Local human rights groups say police are actively involved in killings, but also willing to turn a blind eye when children are targeted by vigilantes or killed in fights between teenage gangs. The culture of violence and impunity allows the police to abuse their authority, and this is tolerated by society. Now society is questioning the role of human rights organizations. Across Latin America, street children have been targets of death squads who blame them for rising crime. Bruce Harris, a respected British aid worker, calls the killings social cleansing. 50 to 55 kids every month are being murdered. The vigilantes who are killing our kids, the, the police who are killing their kids, and there are organized groups that we fear are killing our kids. But nobody seems to care. Where are the investigations? Where are the prosecutions? Less than three or four percent of these cases have ever reached a conviction. The crisis was unleashed four years ago when Honduras was devastated by Hurricane Mitch. As thousands of poor families lost their homes, many of their children ended up on the streets. It seems the public opinion is not against the killing of children. Nobody has come out and screamed and said, hey, you've got to stop killing these kids. Why and is that? They don't seem to see these children as being human. Brutalized, abandoned, street children can end up dead or in jail. Most of the inmates we met in this prison outside the capital had killed other children. Yet one can never quite forget how young they are. Like 14-year-old Enrico, we can't identify him, who was convicted of murder and rape. When you're in a gang or on the streets, you run the risk of being killed. When you're on the streets, you're seen as a drug addict and as a potential robber. If you're not killed, you could be seriously beaten. While I was on the street, on drugs and in a gang, I've seen around a hundred victims killed. Nobody accuses the police of doing all the killing, but the allegation is that the security forces have scant regard for the lives of street children. Now under international pressure, the government has set up this special police unit to investigate the killings. 
12 policemen have been arrested. But the unit has only five members. The government insists it's not afraid of the powerful security establishment. The police has to listen to me. They have to follow our policies. If they don't do that, they're going to be fired. Or if they can be uh, persecuted uh, just for no compliance with uh, the policies that we're trying to implement. But none of the street children we spoke to had any trust in the police. What hope exists for them is found here at Casa Alianza, the refuge run by Bruce Harris and his colleagues. Around 120 live here, out of a total of more than 20,000 street children in Honduras. For somebody like Francis, left crippled by gunmen firing from a car, this is a place of hope. Instead of fighting for life on the streets, she's getting an education. What do you think would happen to you if you went back out on the streets? They would kill me. I would be in real danger, and that's why I would not like to return to the streets right now. God has given me an opportunity to change and to make something of my life. In Honduras, rampant poverty and a police force long used to acting with impunity have created a human rights crisis. And for the street children preparing for another night, a world without hope. Carlos, do you think that you're going to survive these streets? No. Any one of these children can be killed tonight. And beyond their own small band, very few people will either know or care. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Honduras.